this country. And I think part of that is due to the embedding process. You know, reporters embedded in the front lines of troops in Iraq gives you one perspective. Um, but what about reporters embedded in hospitals and Iraqi communities and the peace movement around the world to show the full repercussions of war, the true costs of war? And it's not only being embedded in the front lines of troops, it's being embedded in the establishment. He interviewed Alistair Sparks, who is a great South African journalist, ran the Rand Daily Mail, were exposed the murder of Steve Biko, the founder of the Black Consciousness Movement, uh, was named by Nelson Mandela to be on the board of the South African Broadcasting Corporation. And I was speaking to him in Doha, in uh, Qatar. And he was talking about the role of the press in the United States and how it always amazes him how embedded the journalists are in the United States. And I think this all has to be challenged as those reporters sit in the White House um, press room and have those press briefings, their gaggles every day. Um, I often refer to the access of evil, you know, trading truth for access. In order to get that question directly answered, maybe by the vice president or the president, you throw softball questions at them. And it's not worth it. You know, these politicians need us much more than we need them. Um, the access isn't worth it. And it's, it really matters. And Timor taught me this, but so did many stories all over the world and right here at home, that when the media acts as a conveyor belt for lies, I mean, you look at the lead up to the invasion and you look at what happened in this country. Uh, in 2003, this group called FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting here, based in New York, did a study of the two weeks around Colin Powell giving his push for war at the United Nations on February 5, 2003. He was then Secretary of State. FAIR looked at the four major nightly newscasts at NBC, ABC, CBS, and the PBS NewsHour with Jim Lehrer. There were 393 interviews done around war. Only three were with anti-war leaders, three of almost 400. That's no longer a mainstream media. That's an extreme media. That's a media beating the drums for war. Because those who are opposed to war, those who are opposed to torture, are not a fringe minority, not even a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the corporate media, which is why we have to take it back.